everybody, welcome to the Fire It Up with CJ show. I'm here with Don Miguel Ruiz, and we are talking about his book, The Seven Secrets to Healthy, Happy Relationships. In the first segment, we were talking about um, how we move to self-mastery um, during these challenging times and um, some of the things that Miguel has experienced in his own life and how, and he was explaining how um, he has navigated this um, incredible time of great transition. And at the tail end of that um, conversation, we were talking about compassion. And um, there's so much division, um, fear, um, because people want to make different choices whether they wear a mask or not wear a mask, or they get vaccinated or not, whether they believe they're a Democrat or Republican, whether they believe people should, you know, immigrants should come in. I mean, there's just every time there is just so much division and um, separation. And I'm wondering um, how we move to a different place. And you were talking about compassion and how, um, we've all um, lost something during this um, COVID, but how how do we move to a place where there's less division and how do some of the things in your books may help us think through that? Well, in regards to division, you know, it's, uh, it's it really comes down to the attachment to our beliefs, you know, the, how we domesticate ourselves to an idea. If we use the five levels of attachment, um, as a descriptor, you know, uh, an attachment is something healthy um, because we're investing of ourselves in something that's not a part of us. And what makes it unhealthy is that when it is the time to let go, we can't. We mm. can't let go because who are we without it? Who are we? So we begin to internalize. So as we get attached to an idea, it becomes a slippery slope to now we are domesticate ourselves to that idea. I have to be the perfect person. I have to be this image of what is right or what is wrong. You know, um, it reminds me of, uh, there was an interview of a CIA agent or something like that. And she said something quite remarkable. She said, the thing about every case that they investigated is that every person believed that they were in the right. Mm -hmm. Every per person believes that they're on the right. Mm -hmm. um, that also means that the person on the other side of the spectrum, they believe that they're in the right. So, mm -hmm. And we can say it's a clash and contrast. And, you know, it's kind of hard to even begin to imagine how can the other person be on the right? You know, that's because of perception. You know, it's, perception is relative to the individual point of view. But you can also say that perception is molded by the domesticated or conditioned beliefs we have. I have to live up to this image. I have to live up to this expectation. So now, you know, the problem that our Toltec tradition deals with is something called domestication, which is a system of reward and punishment by which we model the behavior of an individual, where if we live up to the expectation, we're worthy of love. And if we fall short of that expectation, we uh, are worthy of the punishment. So instead of using politics as the example, I'm going to use my tradition. Mm -hmm. Let's just use myself as an example. Okay. My name is Don Miguel Ruiz Jr. I don't take things personal. I don't make assumptions. I always do my best. <gasps> I forgot the fourth agreement. Oh no, how can I call myself a Toltec if I don't know the four agreements? And there's the downward spiral punishing myself for not living up to that image of perfection that is Don Miguel Ruiz Jr. So in order for him to be the perfect Toltec, he will follow the four agreements, doesn't take things personal, doesn't make assumptions, always is impeccable with his word, thank you very much, and always does his best. If I live up to those four agreements, then I'm worthy of love. But if I forget something, when I fall short of that image of perfection, then I'm gonna punish myself, for example, for getting the fifth agreement be skeptical, but learn to listen. And there's the downward spiral again, punish myself over and over again because I didn't live up to that image. Right. At that moment, I am using the four agreements, not as an instrument of personal freedom and healing, 
I'm using it as an instrument of domestication mm. where I say, in order to be worthy of love, I have to be this perfect image of Don Miguel Ruiz who always lives up to the four agreements. The telltale sign that we use the four agreements as an instrument of domestication is judging ourselves for taking things personal, judging ourselves for making an assumption, judging ourselves for the rest of it. That's the telltale sign. Mm. At that moment, we are no longer practicing the four agreements. We are practicing the four conditions of our personal freedom. Mm -hmm. In fact, it's not personal freedom. We're now using the four agreements, actually in this case, the four conditions as this condition for self-love. And mm -hmm. it has nothing to do with personal freedom because now we're subjugating our free will to these conditions. Mm -hmm. At that moment, we're corrupting the Totic tradition. Mm -hmm. And if we understand this concept, we can probably see how we corrupt Deepak Chopra, Marianne Williamson, Jesus, Buddha, Siddhartha, Muhammad, psychology, psychology, alcoholics anonymous. Right. All of a sudden we use all these instruments of unconditional love and corrupt them and turn them into instruments of domestication. Mm -hmm. We corrupt music in the same way. You're hip if you listen to the right music and you're a square if you don't. Mm -hmm. And if you're pretending to like something you're not, you're a wannabe. All these conditions. <laughs> right. So you can say that with in religion and in politics, the same corruption exists. You know, sometimes it's the wannabes that are trying to prove themselves so much that really create all this havoc. Mm -hmm. At the same time, are the people who are so attached to it that they have to live up to an image and everyone around them have to live up to an image. At that moment, being liberal, conservative, or Republican or Democrat or capitalist or whatever, all of a sudden it stops being, they all of them start being an instrument, an ideology, a philosophy that allows you to manage the good of the community. And it starts being, I'm right, I'm wrong. If mm. I'm right, I'm worthy of being this image. If I'm wrong, then there's no way I'm wrong because there's no way I could cover <laughs> my side. So you can say that in both sides, you know, like they're always justifying, well, it was this group. No, it, it was that group. Like we're innocent. It was all their fault, you know, in, in, in the riots and all kind of thing. We're quick to excuse our side because mm. our side cannot be in the wrong. And that it's all of them. And at that moment, we're corrupting all of it. It, also, it stops being about a philosophy or a, or a belief system that allows you to find what is the good for the general public. And it starts being, my side is right, my side and your side is wrong. And there's a division. Mm -hmm. You know, there was a time where people were, were able to uh, uh, work across the aisle, but now the condition is so strong that they, even if they want to, they're not allowed. Mm. So, you know, they'll be called a hypocrite or a traitor or a, a wannabe or a sellout. And, mm. you know, mm. it, it's, a, it's one of those things that you have to be all in. And something, you know, we see it in sports, we see it in religion, and we see it in politics, we see it in music, because the division is not just political, the division is cultural. You know, there, you have to be, uh, in my case, the right kind of Mexican. I, I, I have to listen to this kind of music. And why are you listening to that kind of music? Or why are you even speaking in English? You should always be speaking Spanish. Division exists everywhere, not just in mm. politics. It create, exists in, in culture, in a class, in society, in, in art, in yoga. You know, this corruption of spirituality. We see that in spiritual circles all around, not, not, for, not just uh, religion, but you know, there's people who said, my Hatha yoga is much better than your Kundalini, where Kundalini is more spiritual, uh, much better than uh, Bikram and Bikram. And, and, and you can say that I'm more spiritual than you, you know? <laughs> it's it's kind of like in the running community, they, 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 it's uh, cause I'm a runner and I, I run marathons yeah. and half marathons. I've seen people insult each other. You're not a runner, you're a jogger. <laughs> So you can say that when we create those hierarchies, you know, what's, what's happening uh, politically 
it's also happening with music, with mm. culture, with, I'm repeating myself, mind you, but I'm reemphasizing the point, mm. the need to love ourselves conditionally, because that's what domestication or conditioning is, the ability to love each other, I love you if, which is conditional love, will always create division. Mm. Because in order to be worthy of love, I have to have this image and I have to have a contrast to that because otherwise, how will I ever know that I'm righteous or virtuous? So mm. that we can say that in order for us to ever let go of the vision, not just in politics or in religion, but in every facet of our life, we begin to heal the wounds that conditional love left in our hearts. We give mm -hmm. ourselves the permission to heal those wounds. And that's an inner journey. That's a personal journey. You know, if you try to heal it as a mass community, there will be those groups that are like, well, you're imposing your point of views upon me. And whenever that happens, of course, it's going to be pushed back, mm -hmm. which means that the solution is as an individual journey. Mm -hmm. Individually, we heal our own wounds. We begin to let go to give mm -hmm. scrutiny to those conditions or beliefs that no longer reflect our truth. Mm -hmm. And all okay. of a sudden, all our beliefs, you know, all our philosophies, all our doctrines get cleansed in the sense that they're no longer corrupting. And I'm going back to knowing the difference between practicing the four agreements or practicing the four conditions. And here's the thing, Someone who practices the four conditions still calls it the four agreements. Well, what are the and four they, conditions? I don't know what the four, can you tell me what the four conditions are? Oh, the, like I was saying before, is when you use the four agreements as an instrument of domestication. Oh, I see. Okay. So it's all those same words, but you use it as conditions. So tell me what they are again. I'm, I'm sorry. I should. Personal, don't make assumptions. Always do your best and be impeccable with the word. Those are the mm. four agreements agreements by the book, uh, the book by my Don Miguel Ruiz, my father. Okay. The quintessential work uh, thing, but I use this analogy because I've seen how growing up in this family and seeing how people, there are people who use the teachings as an instrument for personal transformation and healing. And on the same term, using the same words that are used to create that division I am better than you because mm -hmm. whatever, whatever it is, everyone's different. <laughs> but mm -hmm. the constant is they both say they practice the four agreements, but one uses it as an instrument of unconditional love. The other one uses it as an instrument of conditional love. Mm, and, I get and, it now. And for me, you know, I've, I've, I've having witnessed that in my family with myself of course that's how i found mm -hmm. out you know before before i even wrote a book people would ask me which one of the four agreements is the hardest one for you to follow and i always answered taking things personal or being impactful with the word mm -hmm. and then one day i realized the reason why those are the most difficult one is because i was pretending to be a man who doesn't take things personal and who is impeccable with his word and the truth is Hello, my name is Miguel Ruiz Jr. And I do take things personal. I do make assumptions. Sometimes I'm not impeccable with the word. Sometimes I'm not skeptical at all. I buy a hook, line, and sinker. And sometimes I don't do my best. Just ask my wife. She is my witness. <laughs> and that's to me where the mastery of self comes in. Uh, a moment where I stop pretending to be something I am not. And I accept mm -hmm. myself just the way I am. Mm, oh, that's just such a beautiful example. And it's funny because when I was, I was preparing for this interview, I thought, I wonder what it's like being, you know, Don Miguel Ruiz's son. <laughs> that must suck in so many ways and must be beautiful in so many ways. But, you know, even the bio that was given to me was like mentioning that you're the son. I'm like, what? That must be a hard thing. But anyways, I'm going to go back. So it's funny that you mentioned this because I had an intuitive sense like, yeah, there, it, it, it must be very hard. But what, but what I love is um, what I'm drawing from this is almost how do you know if you've crossed the line? How, have you, how do you know if you're moving from unconditional love to being, you know, a judge? And 
I was pulling out little statements that you had said as you were listing out the examples, but when you say I'm right and you're wrong, <laughs> mm -hmm. that's one way in which you know, like if you're, oh, I just heard the news and they're just so wrong. I can't believe blah, blah, you know, whatever you're going down that path, mm -hmm. that is potential of an area to examine within and ask yourself, what am I saying? Why am I saying? And what's happening internally for me? Or you stand in judgment and you make, oh, that's such a blankety blank dismissive statement to say about someone, you know, like, oh, they're such idiots. But, you know, you know, because I and I've seen all of this, right? And 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 I have felt those things in myself as well. It and whenever you don't allow the a person a freedom to do and be who they are whether you wear a mask, whether you don't wear a mask, whether you've lost someone, you've lost a bit. It's like, just let them do what they want. Give them the freedom to do what they want. Why, who made you the judge to tell them whether something is right or wrong? Just allow people, give them freedom. And then whenever you presume you're better or there's a hierarchy, those are like, those are like, aha, uh -huh, like anytime you feel these things and you are giving conditions in which someone can be loved or is right or good. And so those were kind of what I drew from your stories of how, how do I know if I'm on the spectrum? Because I'm always like, oh, I'm perfect. <laughs> but, but of course, I, I like yourself, do not do my best. You can ask my husband, you know, make assumptions and not always impeccable and take things personally. So um, I like yourself, don't live up to that. And do I accept myself fully? That's the part that I'm still, I'm still on the journey figuring out. Um, one of the things that I've been looking at is I'm so... I have to be doing and accomplishing and helping the world. And then I realized that that's a compulsion. It's a being attached to that desire of altruistic. I have, to, it's almost like forcing myself to do something altruistic. And I realized that if I'm just sitting around, just being, it makes me nervous. Like I have to get up and do something. And I've been trying to force myself to just be. And, and so I can look at this. I'm definitely not right. I stand in judgment of myself because I'm not being altruistic. I'm not even giving myself freedom to just sit and do nothing. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like I've been given so many opportunities. Therefore, I have like, you know, some type of hierarchical knowledge, let's say that I need to go out and share. So I, I, I can see this all in play. And the healing is, is very hard to do. I mean, yeah. I've been just looking like, how did I get this? <laughs> how did this happen to me? Mm -hmm. um, and, and where did I get these ideas that this is the way to be like altruistic means self-sacrificing to being like a martyr to help the world. You know, it's conditioned in all the movies that we see, but I don't know if you've ever had anything similar. <laughs> No, but, but you've, 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 you've used a great example, you know, like, thank you for being honest. Uh, you, you, you hit it right in the head. You, you're something beautiful by being altruistic. It's a beautiful concept and a beautiful expression. And it's a, a, something that's needed in the community, but it's so easy to corrupt in our own personal life. Like, in, lives. like in order to be worthy of love or in order to accept myself, I have to be altruistic. If I'm not doing it, what does that say about me? And at that moment, we've corrupted it, just like we corrupted the four agreements into the four conditions. And we think we're practicing the four agreements, but we're not. And at this moment, you're forcing yourself to be altruistic because if you're not, then how are you worthy of love? How do you know that you are righteous? And, yes. that's, and that's when it gets corrupted. It, it's no, you're no longer doing it because of love and mm. compassion. You're doing it because of obsession and conditional love you can right. almost tell the difference you know if there's a telltale sign is the difference between passion and compassion sorry sorry, yeah. sorry. Uh, uh the difference between passion and obsession i apologize mm -hmm. for that mm -hmm. uh that part passion is the expression of unconditional love and most of the time is confused people confuse obsession with passion 
which is two, two totally different things. You know, it's, it's a obsession. You're constantly trying to live to this image. You have to always work for that. But passion is the beginning step in any direction. Mm -hmm. Is the difference between I have to and I want to. Mm -hmm. If you do things because I have to, you're resenting the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And only because you're trying to live up to that image of, in my case, good son, good, uh, good, good father, or uh, Don Miguel Ruiz Jr. And at that point, then I'm giving away the power to anyone who has judgment of how I'm supposed to live. Their projections mm -hmm. and constantly trying to live up. You can, like, you alluded that to your earlier question. It must suck to be Dom, the son of Don Miguel Ruiz. Well, what you're referring to is the projections that people have of who I'm supposed to be. Yes. If I use those projection as the basis of my domestication, then I'm always chasing an elusive carrot. Mm. That's the, the fuel that gives mm -hmm. my obsession its power, mm. living up to an image that doesn't exist. And what I mean by doesn't exist is the projections that people have of me. Mm. In that regards, your statement, earlier statement about it must be sucked to be Tommy Ruiz because of all the expectations, the answer, yeah. if I gave power to the, that image, yes, it would. And in a way, that's the reason why I like teaching the four conditions because I challenge it right off the bat. Mm. You know, I let people know that image doesn't exist. If you already see that you're doing that with the four conditions, I can already see that you're trying to do that with me. So my temptation is to believe it. Mm. My temptation to domesticate myself is to believe people's projection of me, including my own projection. Mm. So that's why I say like an alcoholic or drug addict that says the truth in those meetings. Hello, my name is Miguel Ruiz Jr. And I do take things personal. I do make assumptions. Sometimes I'm not impeccable with the word. Sometimes I don't do my best. Mm -hmm. It is the moment where I stop pretending to be something I am not. And I accept myself for who I am at this very moment. Mm. And what that allows me to do is honor who I really am. Mm. And that's unconditional love. Mm. And passion is just the word that describes my intent from the point of view of I, I want to, as opposed to I have to, to create the, the world I want to live in. Mm. So from that point of view, altruism is an expression of something I want to create when I'm in a position to create. Mm. Obsession mm. is I'm gonna be an altruistic even when I'm not in a position to help, I'm gonna sacrifice myself and martyr myself. At that moment, I'm not being altruistic. I'm being, well, I'm using it to love myself conditionally and reject myself if I live up to an image or not. Mm, yeah, beautiful. It's um, it's really powerful. It's it's deep heart work because as I'm put, I'm applying the words that you have said. First of all, my heart was like aching when you were saying that. So you hit some raw nerve when when you were talking about that. Um, and then my legs cross. So I do think that there's something <laughs> defended and like, oh, there you hit, you hit pay dirt. And the question then as I'm listening and digesting what you're saying is, okay, where did these beliefs come from? Mm -hmm. where, where did these beliefs come from? And, you know, why well, do I choose to believe them? Uh, you, you believe them is, is equivalent of saying yes to it. It doesn't matter where, whether, where it came from. What matters is that you continue to say yes to it. So how do you release yourself from it? Forgive yourself for ever saying yes to it in the first place. Mm. Yeah. Okay. You know, I have this saying. Uh, well, first is uh, Neil, Neil deGrasse Tyson says, the truth exists whether you believe in it or not. If we have one of the definition of what truth is, it is something that exists with or without me. What I mean by that, it exists with or without humans. The mm -hmm. truth exists regardless whether you believe in it or not. 
-hmm. In contrast, a belief only exists for as long as you say yes to it. Oh. And the moment you change that yes into a no, it ceases to exist, which means a belief only exists for as long as you believe it. It needs you for it to exist. So mm -hmm. here's the difference. If you need to defend it, if you need to constantly argue and protect and debate, then it's possibly not the truth. You're defending a belief mm -hmm. because the, uh, the truth doesn't need you. It doesn't need you at all. Mm -hmm. But a belief does. Yeah. It's and if fear, you have yeah. that need to defend it, to protect it, to judge, then you are arguing a belief. Mm. Yeah, it's um, while you're saying all of this, I just feel my heart like softening throughout this whole thing. It's um, it's very heart healing, isn't it? This whole idea of healing, forgiving yourself for mm -hmm. believing these things, choosing to say yes to them and now choosing no, and then mm -hmm. loving yourself regardless. It's extremely healing. And when that happens- yeah, go ahead. And, 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 and empowering too, because my favorite quote is by Eleanor Roosevelt that goes like this No one can make you feel inferior without your consent. To rephrase that, no one can make me feel inferior without my consent. Mm. In other words, no one can domesticate me without my consent. Which means all those words, all those beliefs have power over me because I said yes to it. Yeah. And if someone makes me feel inferior, that makes me tell tells me that I'm not worthy of love because of this, because of that, that only has power over me because I said yes to it. Mm -hmm. So then it reminds me of this other image of Siddhartha when Mara sees that he's not tempted by the, his three daughters. So he decides to send his army to destroy Siddhartha and they shoot their arrows at Siddhartha and Siddhartha looks at those arrows and turns them into roses mm. because he didn't give those words permission, those arrows permission to hurt him. Mm. And that's another way to say, don't take things personal. Mm -hmm. It's a way to say, I don't give you permission to subjugate me with your domesticated point of view. In this mm. case, I don't give permission to the four conditions to impact my life. So mm. going back to that question, how do we handle or solve division? Well, we do so by eliminating the, eliminating the division within ourselves. And it starts from letting go of the belief that I have to live up to an image in order to be worthy of love. Mm. Um, how heart healing and beautiful it is always um, so um, deeply um, magical and healing and wonderful to be in your presence I oh, really so really much, deeply appreciate talking to you today too <laughs> All right, we've been talking to Don Miguel Ruiz, um, who um, is the author of The Seven Secrets to Healthy, Happy Relationships. Thank you so much.